What's up, guys? Time for our November Q&A last time. Some of you guys enjoyed this shit, so hopefully you had some interesting questions to go through. Um, so I was just looking at the first question. You just commented, man, like five minutes ago, Lofi Radio. Um, and as, you're, as I'm reading your question, I was tinkering around with this thing I use, um, the, the screen recorder, and looks like it's got some new functions. I didn't see this before. Check this out. So I haven't tried out how this looks. Um, I think it looks like how it looks like when I'm looking at it. So if that's true, if that's the case, I think it's pretty dope. That way I can actually go through and check out stuff and then come back. And then you guys, I can do the whole question like this. That's, that's pretty dope. All right. So having that said, uh, let's get into it. All right. So we're going to go through the you know, questions up until like, what do you call it, Whatever the last time it is, um, that I left off. Okay, how much did you charge your first SEO client? First SEO client, like the very first person that I got paid for for SEO um, was I think 150. Might have been like $50 for like a week or something for me to like change this one function. I can't remember exactly, but it was monthly first monthly client was $150 it was like when I was just reading about how to create um, you know WordPress sites um, and then like I was reading like Alex Becker's free Academy the one that you can get in for $1 um, and then and, and yeah that's that's when I got my first client it was a uh, I think a guy in Brooklyn New York as a, as a you know, he was like a roofer and I just called him off Yelp or Home Advisor, one of those two, and uh, basically explained to him, "Hey, look, <laughs> it was like you know there was no structure to it." And then he called me out to his place. When I went there, um, I remember a couple of his buddies making fun because I was wearing like I was wearing um, which one call it? What are they called? Tims, as they call it here. Here, Timberlands, right? So it's like boots for construction workers but i clearly didn't look like somebody who you know know anything about construction so they were like like yo you you must be the last person who who should be wearing those boots anyways okay it's just a little what else can i say about a client that was paying me 150 dollars? i can only talk about the fucking like how funny the day day was so anyways that guy paid me 150 dollars uh for one keyword okay it was an exact match keyword so i got it exact match domain did on page like alex was saying copied and pasted content um i think i threw some like black hat links.com links at the citations that we built and it ranked it was not a keyword that was getting much search volume i think it was like showing in the keyword planner 10 to 100 and that was it so he paid me 100 dollars and for like i don't know it was like three four months and he canceled and you're just like not getting anything from it so that was my first client that was my very first like payment I got in the in, under the name of SEO. Okay, it was like hundred fifty dollars per month for like three four months. Um, but my first real client, like when I say real client, I mean that I at least understand what I am trying to bring to the table. That time I didn't even understand what it's supposed to do. Like I, I I was trying to rank him for organic. I didn't know maps. Like at that time in the beginning, I didn't know maps at all. I thought it was just something dumb for reviews and shit. I didn't even care about it, right? I thought everything was like the organic listings. First real client was the guy for 1850, right? That was in what? Late 2017. Um, I mean, there's, you know, there's a video on it, right? And that was, yeah, that was my first real client, I would say. This guy, I knew at least had a base understanding of um, what is it I bring to the table. Like, I know that it's going to be by calls. Um, you know, I had an idea for the basic idea for everything in order to rank in the maps. Um, I actually had a little bit of a process in place, you know, what I'm going to be doing this after this, after this, um, the, the, that 150 guy, I didn't have a process in place. I, he started paying me and then I started looking more into, um, you know, finishing my videos for Alex Becker's course and stuff like that. So that's, that's that. How much do you charge your first as you client? All right. $150, man. <laughs> um, Loom, Chrome extension. Yeah. So I just talked about that. Do you, okay, this is not something for me. Okay. Burn some dust and eat my rubber. Cool quote, man. Burn some rubber and eat my dust. A racing quote, I believe. Um, 
like to okay that's that's it morning status okay no that's me coming metal to the floor pedal to the man yeah, it's pedal to the metal man. metal man um a lot of racing quotes here hell yeah <laughs> digital trigger this guy's been making some videos after a long time so that's kind of cool pew pew dave commented can you can of worms not a bag what All right, what's up, guys? Okay, so we're in my computer. Can of worms, not a bag. Oh, I, I must have, guys. I'm, I'm not from here. Okay, I'm bad with these things. All right, so, like that. I probably said can of bag, bag of ca worms, bag of worms. Yeah, that's something I probably said. Uh, congratulate. Thanks, man. Uh, this shit is motivating as hell, bro. Thanks, man. Hell yeah. Yeah, this place is. This place is great, guys. I mean, I'll. I might make a video about how it's affecting it, but it's pretty much a slam dunk. It's it's way different. I was wrong. I, I confess. I was wrong about the, um, you know, how you should be going like completely, completely fucking, uh, you know, as low as possible with apartments. Um, even though I'm not like, I, I'm still not fully in line with like how much people pay for apartments. Like I, I still have some resistance at the fact that people would pay like Fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars just for their apartment. It's still like kind of not real, but um, I'm grateful that I can you know afford it without being a big deal. And to answer the question more importantly, um, it's making a huge difference. Like I'm not going as hard as I would like just yet. I'm still getting like ramped up for this month, but um, but it's just a lot easier. Like you know, I have a dishwasher, like. All the stuff I showed in that video, um, my expectations are, you know, opening up to it. Like, it's it's warm, it's it's really cozy. <laughs> I'm not uncomfortable. I'm not uncomfortable at all. So I, this is the most comfortable I've been uh, living wise in as far as I can remember. So that's that's cool. Um, did you learn all your SEO from Source Wave? No, <laughs> no, that would not be um, okay. In the beginning, yes. I, learned, I started from Alex um, at that time. Uh, soon after I got into Alex, uh, I got into this course that Gregory Ortiz was teaching in. Um, but that was pretty much like right after I got into SEO, I felt like Alex Becker was, was on his way out. Um, and one thing I learned is that whenever, you know, in an industry where everything's changing, so like SEO, especially nowadays, fuck, like the updates are coming out like fucking every week. Um, whenever you're in an industry that things are changing and the, and you're learning from a course community, whatever, where the main owner leaves, it should be an indication to, um, you know, switch people, the person you're following, or you don't start looking for some different views. Some people who are right on the dot, um, uh, preferably people who are making their money from doing this, you know, compared to people making their money from selling course. I mean, that's a pretty common scenario out there, right? But it's, it's, it's sometimes a little difficult to tell apart. And sometimes um, you'd be surprised, even when you know inside, you like, like what you can tell apart, authority speaks volume, right? So when somebody is really good at marketing to sell courses, let's say I know that, hey, this guy is probably not making that much money from actually doing SEO, but he's really good at marketing his courses. Even if I know that, if he's really good at selling courses, I still look at their shit, <laughs> right? So you have to be careful. Anyways, um, I'm just giving you a holistic, you know, like like idea of how to sift through. There's so many people in the industry right now, just look around, you know, um, who are the main guys in the main communities. You'll find some good information. And overall, I touched on this before. I like the SEO community as a whole. I think it's pretty open. Um, obviously, they, to get the real, um, you know, to get the information that, that, that kind of, um, you know, pushes, a lot of power for competitive niches. You have to do more than just, um, you know, taking some of the top level courses uh, to, to basically like, you know, give you an idea. But generally speaking, like over 80, 90% of the stuff you need to know to have a business in place to run a business to get paid for this shit is out there. And is, is, is you know, they're, they're helping people out. Most of the communities that's, you know, um, that, that are advertising um, are very supportive. You know, you can ask questions. Um, you know, a lot of these, the owners would take a, you know, peek at your, your, your questions personally. So I think it's great, you know, compared to many other, um, whatever, like, you know, ways of, uh, communities out there. I think that's, you can be overall, I, I, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I just, 
feel like it's lacking in terms of like actual business side uh, skills, right? Like there's not much um, out there that tells you how to sell properly, how to scale. This is something that I, I think is almost like kind of like stifened. Like people will show you what, how like techniques to rank, but where the 80, 20 is to take and what pushes the power and then how you can scale that out um, is kind of like stifened, which makes sense because somebody giving you their systems Right. Like, think about it. Like if somebody was to teach you, OK, hey, this is what this is the way to build the links and it'll push power. Great. That's awesome. But if he was to show you this is exactly the steps I hand over to my VA uh, and this is where it sits in my uh, in my sequence of activities I do while ranking, they're kind of giving you their business. So it makes sense. Not anybody does that. Right. Their back end system that they're using to run their business. Um, that's where it's lacking and it makes sense. So that's where you're going to face the trouble. This is why I had so much trouble in March, April. And I was so frustrated because there was really little help to um, make those processes, right? But once you do get that in place, damn, it's, it's, it's nice. It's fucking like, this is what it's supposed to feel like to be in like an online marketer, I guess, um, you know? Like guys, nowadays I'm like chilling. I'm right now in November, I'm trying to, you know, like ramp things up as I said in the last video, but honestly, like this is like around the time where I'm able to feel like, like what kind of, um, you know, benefits you can have from this lifestyle. Like I could chill. I have been chilling for a lot of the times, um, you know, like through my week, I'm not working that much. Like, honestly, I'm just working a couple hours a day, um, if that, and, and things are just fine, right? not to jinx it or anything and not to say that that's okay. It's just that when you want to take it slow, you can fucking take it slow and it's okay. Once you build the systems, I know I'm going way off <laughs> in this topic, but yeah, man, I didn't use source wave to learn all my SEO, but it's where I started. Really happy for you, man. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Um, if, if this, if this shit is motivating you guys, please let me know. Uh, you know, I'm pretty insecure. So when you guys let me know, it makes me encouraged to make more videos. <laughs> okay. Um, Hey, thanks for the video. Here's the thing. Some of the, that's, oh, fuck. I was going to do the thing. I was going to do the, every time I talk, I was going to supposed to do this shit. Okay. Let me try to do this. Um, thanks for the video. Uh, tasting some of the stuff that needs to be repaired by your landlord. Also, before you move into an apartment, let me see the, I can't see the full question, man. Um, oh yeah, it has the roof leak. Fuck, I never called the roofer. That was like, that's that's something that I should have done. All right, um, something that needs to be repaired by landlord. Yeah, clearly, this, these guys don't give a fuck. Um, they didn't repair the roof, uh, water, heater. Heater was such a drag in that house, man. It's insane. And now that I move here and I'm like, I'm like thinking like, fuck, I can't believe I put up with that shit for so long. Um, heating was a trouble guys. Like, I don't even know how to, like if you have never lived in a cold climate, you wouldn't, it's impossible to understand what, I, what I'm be talking about. But like through a lot of times in the middle of the night, I have to wake up and open the window just a bit so I can have normal air come in and not just like hot, dry air, which is making my throat like, like uh, rough because I'm using like Amazon heaters, like air heaters compared to normal heaters like now, which you don't even know it's there. Like I just feel warm. Like, you know, the room is not cold. I mean, I'm still wearing a hoodie. I don't know. I mean, okay. I don't want to get too much into it, but I think I like just wearing something nowadays. I got used to it, but it's not cold here before I would be wearing the hoodie and my hands would be cold and my face would be cold. That's how I'd be wearing beanies and scarves in the room and shit. Um, and that wasn't even the big problem. The biggest problem is sleeping. Sleeping was really an issue because the air would be so dry and I would have to adjust like middle of the night. It was stupid. Um, yeah, so landlord was a dick in that place. And, and, and basically it was just okay because you know the system I had it was rent was so low, right? Right now rent is you know pretty, pretty up there. Um, also, before you move into another apartment, have you thought about getting a house? <sighs> really um how do you say can be a long question by this i mean money you pay rent can go towards owning your first property therefore it would be an investment all right so fuck how do i answer this so obviously there's gonna be like a lot of controversial 
um, talk on this, but I'll just give you like my idea and try to understand where I'm coming from with this. Because sometimes things don't logically make sense, but it makes sense in the... I've got a roof leak. The fuck? I press space. But it makes sense, like a bit more sense at least, from where you're coming from, right? Your, your entire movement, where that idea sits in your holistic plan. All right, so number one is this. Number one is, I'm not too sure that having a house is actually profitable, right? It's a common, commonly thought of, you know, like, why are you going to pay rent? You know, if you're paying somewhere, let's say like 2000 for rent, right? That's money that's going every month and you're just paying that just to exist, right? For a house, it makes sense. Okay, I, like, that's the common idea you're coming for. Hey, you put that on the house and one day you're going to own the house. So you have somebody to show for it. Logical. But if you take into account the things that have to, ha have to happen for that to come in place, that whole idea of, oh, you could get a house, rent out the first two floors, live in the basement, and you could possibly be living rent free. I'm not too sure how easy that is. People say it like as if you could just get any house. But if you look at the market, it's not the case. You need some good skills to be able to get a location, get a house that's, um, you know, well enough, whatever, and only has minor uh, adjustments to be made so that you can rent it out to people and then possibly live in the basement or something uh, and then have it rent free. That takes some skill. That takes some positioning. You can't just like walk into the dark and get a house like that. That's number one. So I'm not too sure how easily a house is profitable, right? On, 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 on second thought, if I was to get into a house and buy a house, I would still try to just get it by living off an apartment. I like apartments. Like, I like the idea of being able to move whenever I want, even though I rarely do. It's, it's, it's funny. I, I lived in the same neighborhood for like six years. Uh, I moved like three times around the neighborhood, very tight, like, you know, where I was living, like a couple streets. And this by itself is not too far away from where I'm living either. It's like, what, 20 minutes north. Um, but the thing I'm trying to make is, I like to be mobile. I like to at least have the idea that, hey, if I want to wrap up and go and something changes tomorrow, I can just get the fuck out of here with a book bag and my computer, right? I like that idea. Now, the reason I'm bringing it up in a, in a logical, this kind of question is because not just because of the mobility, it's because with the house, there's a lot of other stuff that doesn't come into the question when we're normally talking about it, right? There is maintenance, lawn, the landlord, he comes, this motherfucker is downstairs, I swear to God, every single fucking day. Every single day, this guy's downstairs doing some shit and it blows my mind. Every time I see him downstairs, I'm like, what the hell is he doing? He's either mowing the lawn, taking out the trash, sifting through shit, making sure the garbage is in the thing, going through this, uh, like, like, like working out, like always just doing some shit. Now, I know he's crazy, like there's something mentally wrong with that guy to be doing that every single day for a couple hours. Yeah, I don't like my old landlord. This guy's like super racist. Um, but anyways, the point was I realized I got to see firsthand like, wow, this is a lot of shit he does. And not to mention, he's not even doing all the shit he's supposed to do. Clearly, I was suffering. And, you know, the people that are living in that house doesn't have all the normal things you're supposed to have in a house. And still he was out there doing all the maintenance shit. House has a roof. That shit breaks. Like the people I serve, you know, these contracts are going for, these are home services. Homes is a, has a ton of other probabilities which can break and wear and tear. And I feel like from my point of view where I'm just trying to focus on one thing and move in that direction at a pretty high velocity, right? I'm trying to get shit done, um, uh, move up, grow this business fast. I could do without it, right? I could do without it, especially when it's just one little thing, one little house I would be getting into and and it's not something I'm looking to like scale up and get like a bunch of rental properties one after one after one. It's not like my investment of choice at the moment. It's just, I would just do it for myself, right? I could do without it. That's my entire idea behind it. So like I said, I'm gonna, I threw around a lot of things out there, um, a lot of stuff that's gonna be controversial, but that's how I look at it, right? Um, there's whenever you have to get into a lot of probability, which can, you know, make you lose money and cause stress. But the thing you have to gain is just for one house's rental income. 
you have to look at what's the other side. If I was just working at a nine to five job, then yeah, then, then I'll, I'll, it makes sense. My, 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 my income is pretty much capped and only go by by 5% or something every like fucking decade or whatever they do. <laughs> then I would look at for every other way I could like, you know, be investing and be more efficient. We are marketers. We, we, we are growing a business. We're entrepreneurs. We're trying to go at this shit hard. And from my point of view, if I can not get into other stuff um, and just focus on this, it just makes sense to me, right? Like, I just don't know much about other stuff and it's for a good reason, right? I touched on this before, guys. The biggest thing I learned from trying to invest for, what, two, three years from Forex to stocks and everything is the, the biggest knowledge I learned is don't invest. It's just, that's how I, 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 I ran with stuff, right? The biggest thing I learned from doing all that is like, don't get into this shit. Don't get into shit that you don't know, all right? Just confess, eat up the ego and just be like, I don't understand. The biggest thing I learned from not doing any of this is don't get into lottery stuff. I got into Bitcoin, but I knew what I'm getting into. Remember, I made a video clearly stating that I'm putting this money that came in out of nowhere into this shit that happens to be the hype. And, 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 and it stuck and I, it didn't work. And when it, I'm like, fuck, I knew it. The whole way, I mean, I know you're not talk, you're talking about real estate here. I'm bringing in Bitcoin and all this like, you know, stuff that's way more risky. Um, or you could say like, you know, uh, you know, it's not in the same caliber. I would give you an idea for how I think about this shit, right? I focus on just a narrow part and then work to that to scale that up. Now, having this all set, okay? I do have in plans to get into real estate, right? I do have it in my agenda to get into real estate. And if I had to put an age to it, I would say about 32, right? So when I'm at a point where my cash flow is strong, right? Like monthly cash flow is really strong um, to the point where I could invest in things and it would barely matter. Like, you know, I could actually have like a little bit of a, like a mini fuck you pot that I invest in things and if it falls through, it doesn't really matter. I learn from it. I would like to get into rental properties right? Some boring ass model for rental properties uh, with maybe possibly a, a small group of friends who's also looking to the same things and, you know, join some groups in that, in that caliber and, um, and basically start investing, right? Into rental property, something that's not going to exceed eight to 10% a month, nothing risky, right? So again, your these kind of things I feel like is dictated by what you're doing in other parts of life, right? Real estate, whatever I'm going to get into is highly dictated by what I'm doing in SEO now. This is my high risk shit. This is, I'm in my industry that changes week to week, the last couple of weeks, uh, month to month or you know, yearly, every year it changes. And this SEO changes, I'm, I'm on the brink of it. And this is my, my business of choice to bring in cash flow. Great. Now, my second thing that I'm going to invest in, it can't nearly be the same type of risk. In fact, it should be the opposite, right? It should be something that's kind of mindless and I'm in the right place uh, with, with the right type of people and, um, and, and you know, investing risk-free that I can get somewhat guaranteed or high chance of it being stable at eight to 10% and I'm gonna stack up on that. So that's what I would like to get into when I'm like about 30 to 32 and that's what I have in mind. Just so you understand th where I'm coming from this entire thing, all right? Like I said, it was gonna be a long question. Um, did you learn all your SEO from, no, that came in before. Um, one second, guys, let me pause this. I'm going out of battery. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, all right, let's see. I can't listen to music without getting mad. I just hate listening to music. What is this about? Oh, don't listen to music. <laughs> I think the point with that was, um, I was, the point I was trying to make is use music to your advantage, actually. Um, you know, music is so powerful. Don't just blindly listen to it, whatever is like around. You know, pick one that's more in line with you and, um, and listen to it when you listen to certain tracks, especially when you really need it. Um, I feel like we just like blur ourselves with all this, like, you know, just like playing all day, whatever is going on. I don't listen to music much, but when I do, it's like every time it's like a, it's almost like an experience I have nowadays. Yeah, I'm kind of weird like that. But sometimes I do like a music that I like play like 10 times in a row as well. So, you know, guys, it's music. I guess looking back at it, I would just say, don't, don't take this kind of shit too seriously. Um, dude, that is so real. That's the kind of, let me see, let me see what this is. All right, 
I'm gonna, I, I need to really That's just practice point. getting that screen thing in place. So I'm gonna read this and then I'm gonna go back to my top screen. Dude, this is so real. That's the kind of issue you learn, you go from, from the learning phase to the applying one. I don't know why I can't read and think at the same time. What the fuck? I see so many groups telling you to set a one client per month goal as if you can control the flow of clients on a monthly basis. The thing is, once you start, you'll start picking up the phone and start sending emails. You'll know that you'll probably take you more than two months to see what's working and what's uh, not then to close your first client. For me right now, I set my goals to send a specific number of outflow and don't even focus on the results because I know that sometimes you'll get zero clients from the blast and other time you'll get seven clients it's really funny, but all these people selling courses on how to start agency never mention it or anything real in the process. Yeah, um, what car is that? Don't tell me it's a GTR. <laughs> no man, it's not. In fact, I have a video that I was recording when I was trying to get the GTR. I got declined actually, guys. Um, the GTR is um, it's not what I thought. All right, so let me do my screen thing. Boom. So, okay, first of all, I'll go backwards. GTR, what happened was, I got declined. It's not what I thought. It's not just by credit, as I thought, um, which what everything you know pushes. Credit score, credit score, credit score. I have a fucking good credit score. It didn't. It wasn't enough. It's also history. When you're trying to buy big shit, it's also your track record, right? So if your credit score was built on things that are small, like for me, it was like you know paying groceries um, on time, use my credit card for all my normal monthly bills, and paying that off on time. It wasn't big enough to show them that I could get this car. Right. So what they recommended is for me to get something that's at least twenty thousand dollars for the car and then possibly get a mortgage. Right. So I didn't get the mortgage. Obviously, I'm not going to get a mortgage. So I got, you know, my favorite car that's in this price range, which is over twenty thousand dollars. And that's a Mitsubishi Evolution. 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 Why did I say that guy? It's a Mitsubishi um, Evolution 10. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's I would say in my entire life. Um, GTR, this car, Evolution, and then like if I had like anything after that, it would be probably like a Toyota Supra. And then after that, there's like a couple more, but it's it really drops down after that. After that, it's just like kind of normal cars to me, right? These are like probably probably my top three favorites, right? GTR, um, e this Evo, and um, then a Supra. And then like, as time passes in the future, I, I'm like, you know, I'm starting to like Tesla, right? I'm starting to kind of enjoy the whole idea and all the shit that this car is able to do. Um, so just to give a little bit spectrum out there in the future, what I think my garage would be, I'm talking about like age, I don't know, 35 or some shit like that. I think it would be like G GTR, Evo. I might sell the Evo to get the GTR, I'm not sure, but it would be like, at the least, it'll be GTR and a Tesla, right? And then um, it might be GTR, Evo, um, uh, Tesla, something like that. Anyways, so to get to the actual question, I was just thinking out loud because I thought about this not too long ago. All right, um, this is a really fucking good point you pointed out, man. Um, and, and I've mentioned this before. I think I made a whole video about this, just this one aspect of it, which is taking action without, um, without expecting a result. Now, what I mean by that is basically that, you know, you dabble around a lot of shit, let's say calling, emailing, whichever you want, right? Dabbling around a lot of shit until one clicks. Once one clicks, getting into a habit, okay? Crucial here getting into the habit to taking that action every single day. Every day, every uh, Monday to Friday, I'm gonna send out 20 emails a day. Every Monday to Friday, I'm gonna make 50 dials on the phone. These kind of shit is, is, is I would say, one of the most powerful ways that got me to where I am, right? Not ha holding yourself to an actual answer or how many replies you're gonna get. That's something that you can't control as much. But what you can control is the number of times you're gonna pick up the phone. You can control the number of times you're gonna send another email. And when you hold yourself to, to these numbers, you opt out of the emotional roller coaster of day to day, right? If, if I make 50 calls and that's all my goal and I tally myself up and I'm happy, then I made 50 calls. I don't have to feel like, oh fuck, I didn't get my three replies, you know, shit, it's not working out. And then the, the, the point is, since that's the thing that worked for you, you know, that's your, that's your method you're using at that, at that time, if you hit those days for 
consistently, you are going to get to a point where you're getting results, right? So it's super powerful to have this kind of mindset of where you are, um, you know, tying your, you know, tying your happiness or, you know, however you feel that you, the day is going well and satisfaction and attaching to things you can directly control as opposed to sales or replies or things like that. So yeah, man, hundred percent, 100 percent with that. Um, let's go back. Thanks, reflection. Okay, I don't know what that is. I want to verify 300 plus local locations without having address. How you help me? Huh. I'll pass on that, guys. Um, that probably has a lot of NDAs. Um, bro, I love and really appreciate this. Thanks, man. Do you show your face in videos? Maybe it helps build a better connection. I don't know. Just wondering. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely do. I don't know if it does help, but I do show it and I believe it does. So that's what I do, man. Um, just know that other people, most people are not sending out them personal videos and the people who are sending out personal videos, they're probably not showing their face, right? So when you put yourself out there, um, I think it makes a difference. And I was doing that looking shitty. Like I was doing that. You guys seen like, you know, like, I mean, I would send a video like this. Nowadays, I would, um, you know, I would, I would tie my hair back. I have this fake glasses I got from Amazon. Um, just type in nerd glasses. So it's like huge ass glasses. I mean, I showed you guys this, right? And I also wear a fake watch like that. And sometimes I, I would play like office music in my phone. Now I was doing that in, my, in that place in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the last days because my room just doesn't look that far. But right now, if I were to shoot, I'll probably shoot facing the view that way you know like so i'll be facing like this probably get it to a point where the brick isn't showing but like just uh get the point right i'll, I'll have to work with it because it looks decent i mean today's a rainy day so it doesn't look as nice but it looks decent with trees and shit out there and then i'm gonna get a um some uh, some lighting equipment um some better lighting equipment to light up my face and stuff and i actually just ordered a new camera so Let's go to Amazon and take a look at that. Orders. Um, so it's this bundle right here. This is a bundle I got. Um, I just ordered that yesterday. So I'm looking forward to that. This is actually my um, girlfriend's birthday present, my assistant. <laughs> so she's going to be using it for her thing because she um, doesn't want to work full-time in SU anymore. She wants to get paid more and become a photographer and um, do like, you know, like travel photography and stuff like that. So go figure. But the point is, this is the camera what I'm gonna be using to, um, you know, like, like, like shoot my videos for SEO and anything with video artists, stuff like, stuff like that going forward. So I'll let you guys know how it comes out. Um, I mean, not, not, not videos like that. I mean, I'll, I'll figure out what I'm gonna do. It's like video audits have to be through the computer, right? Cause I'm doing screen share, but anything that I have to do like video related, probably like videos for this channel, I'm gonna be using this camera that's coming. So kind of excited about that. Let's see how it works. You know, I, I, I wanted to get something that's easy to use. That's the metric I use, like what's like beginner friendly. Cause I'm not into that, you know, like, like tweaking every shot and all that stuff. I just want something to ready to go. And, um, and I want to see if this can beat my iPhone camera. Cause honestly, like I've been hearing some stuff about how these DSLR cameras are having trouble keeping up with the newest iPhones and the new iPhone cameras are fucking good. Like, you know, if you have good lighting um, and you have this, you know, one of the new phones, they're really good cameras. So let's see, whatever. Um, all right, let's go. Where was it? Oh man, it's gonna load all the way from the up. But um, yeah, guys, I mean, that's where I'm at. What the hell's going on? All right, let me pause this and try to figure this out. All right, guys, I guess this is the last video that I'm going to be, um, I mean, last comment I had pretty much. After that, it's kind of getting stuck. Um, let's see. Do you have depersonalization, personalization, derealization? I can relate to what you're saying. I don't know what that is. Um, I would love to look it up. Pretty sure I could have something like that. Depersonalization. Sounds like ego death to me and if it's that i definitely had huge experiences with that 
um, massive, right? Like enough to overwhelm me and <laughs> and then like basically turn me upside down. Um, is this are marked by periods of feeling disconnected or detached from one's body and thought? Yeah, for sure, man. I would say um, I definitely have that. I I have experienced things that has a permanent effect on me on things on this level. So uh, on my waking daily life, I am in a state a lot of times where um, I can, I'm kind of like not really connected to, <laughs> this is a complete different direction than SEO, isn't it? But um, basically to answer the question, I mean, because I'm just gonna answer whatever comes, right? Um, Oh, how do I put this? It's it's probably a whole topic in, in of itself. And anybody who would be interested, comment a few times because I can make a whole video on this, like a 20, 30 minute video. And it'll be like super interesting. Um, but long story short, it is, I've, I've learned to make it a strength, right? I've learned to make it, make it a strength. It's a lot of times when you see me talk about things, how like, oh yeah, I don't know this apartment is going to be good or not. Like it's because I, I, I am to the point where I actually don't take things for granted or just on a whim, no matter how commonly it's accepted. Anything that's very commonly accepted, they're like, oh, no, duh, that is the case. And if you go here, they will feel this or whatever. I, I, I normally question them, right? And not just like to be curious. I like don't believe it in the back of my head, right? So a lot of what I experience or what I'm going for is I have to experience it firsthand. This is why I break down and test so many things right? Not just in, you know, that's not me just taking my SEO mind and doing it in life. It's the other way around. It's me testing life, everything from what I eat to how I feel or the people I hang out, taking all that and then actually kind of turning that into SEO in a way, if that makes sense, right? Uh, it's not my business showing me how to judge life. It's my experience from life showing me how to take my business. So that's like, you know, in a nutshell, hope that makes sense. Um, I could say about that topic, but if you're really interested, I could make a whole video about that and it would be um, a packed one. So I'll leave it at that guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this as much as last one. Let me know. Um, uh, these are definitely like really long videos. So I don't know if you guys actually watched this entire thing in one go. I can't imagine um, somebody watching this for 40 minutes in a row, but if you do, that's great. And I appreciate you being here. Um, having that said, getting my new camera, Day after tomorrow so stay tuned for some more frequent videos because i'd really like to um see what i can take this with the quality and everything all right peace